Hello, everyone, and welcome back. It's a beautiful Sunday morning here in Lipa City, Batangas. My name is Stanley, and along with my wife, Jen, we are the Crumbs in the Philippines. Hang with us today. We're going to talk about some health care costs and insurance issues and just a few other topics here and there. Anyway, stick around. That's what we'll talk about today. I just want to give a special shout out today to Jerome Agno. Happy birthday, brother. And a happy anniversary to Jerome and Claudine Agno. And say hello to little Jade. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about some health care considerations. It seems to be a pretty common question among a lot of folks that are interested in relocating to the Philippines or any other destinations abroad for that matter. Before we get started, please know that I am not a medical professional and I am not trying to give anyone advice on how to handle their affairs or take care of their insurance. I'm just going to give you a few of the options that I found through research. And then at the after I'm done with that, I'll give you some of the average costs of normal procedures here in the Philippines at different locations. And then at the end, I'll tell you what my solution is, what my healthcare solution is here in the Philippines. So just bear with me. I'll be looking down at my notes from time to time. It just keeps me from forgetting anything. And I any numbers that I have written down, I don't have to rely on my memory, okay? So here as an expat in the Philippines, you have a few options available to you for medical insurance. The first one being that you can get travel insurance from an airline. They do offer plans that last from for one month, two months, six months, usually up to a year for most airlines. Now, this type of insurance only covers accidents and emergencies. And also, God forbid, something should you should lose your life while you're abroad. It also pays for returning your remains back to your country of origin. Some of these things can they vary quite widely in price depending upon your age, the location you're traveling to, and many other factors. But I saw some that were actually pretty reasonable, as low as $21 a month, ranging all the way up to $350 a month on the t type and amount of coverage that you wanted to actually pick up. For $21 a month, the, you were looking at $10,000 worth of coverage, which for a lot of people, that might not be enough if you were in some type of an emergency situation but it's just it's worth looking at and you can go to any of the major airlines including the airlines in the Philippines and, and those options are available to you they have a lot of different levels of coverage and the prices vary based on those different levels of coverage okay now the next thing available to expats is regular health insurance providers from your home country. There are many health care providers that offer international insurance for people that live abroad. It, it can be quite pricey. I, I, this was not something that I considered when I was moving here, so I didn't look at it. I just recently did the research in order to provide this information in the video. But these coverages can start around $275 a month for really high deductible and they cap out pretty low all the way up to five, $600 a month for premium coverage, which is fairly low out of pocket cost and fairly low deductibles. And if, if anyone uh, doesn't understand deductible and max out of pocket costs, just, just look that up online. It's it's not worth me trying to explain it to you on here, but most people know what that stuff is from their years of working and their insurance through their employer. Some of the companies that I researched were uh, Cigna, United Healthcare, Aetna, AXA, Alliance. 
And I'm going to include links to those sites below. They each have down in the description box at the end of the video. Each one of these places have a tool that you can plug in your age, your medical history, what type of coverage you're interested in getting, and they'll spit out a quote for you. Some of them will require you to take a call over the phone to get the quote, but I was able to get three or four just into my email inbox, and that was better. I wasn't interested in talking to insurance salesmen on the phone. So one of the, some of the things that you must consider when you're talking about health care in, for insurance purposes in the Philippines is, number one, your age. The older you are, the more expensive the coverage is going to be. It usually they break it down into categories by decade almost, like ages 40 to 49, for example, is one subset, 50 to 59 is a subset, and so on. And each uh, insurance company normally offers four tiers of coverage, like a bronze coverage, a silver level, a gold level, and a platinum level. And the benefits and costs each increase as you move up the scale. Okay, your current state of health, your health history. Do you take medication regularly is another question you have to ask yourself. And if you're going to have to buy prescription medication regularly, you're going to want that to be included in your health care coverage. Luckily for me, I don't require any medications. The, the only pills I take are a multivitamin once a day, and that's it. And I'm very thankful for that. I've been blessed, and I inherited that from my mom. God bless her. She's still kicking right along, and she also takes absolutely no medication whatsoever, and very, leads a very healthy and active life still. And you'll also need to ask yourself, will you require dental and vision to be included in your health plan? That will increase your costs a little bit and always take a really good look at what's being offered for the cost. Make sure that the procedures that are covered within your specific insurance policy are going to be the ones that you possibly might need while you're living in the Philippines. Okay. High deductible plans are cost less in premiums, but you're going to have pretty high out-of-pocket costs for those plans. And the, as you lower your out-of-pocket costs and deductibles, the premiums go up. Okay. So that's really something that's going to be unique to each individual. There's no way I would even remotely try to recommend a plan to somebody or what they should do regarding their health insurance. That's something that each person has to look at for themselves whenever they're thinking about making a move and, and just think about what you're going to need and do the research for yourself. That way you know exactly what you're getting. You're not dependent on someone else, which is what I did. I did a lot of research, and then I just happened to luck into my insurance situation, as I'll explain to you here in a few minutes. Okay. One of the other options that are available to you if you are in the Philippines on a permanent basis, if, for example, if you have a permanent status visa, so, like I do, a 13A visa or an SRRV visa, then you can actually get the Philippines national insurance called PhilHealth. As a foreigner, at my age, your premium is going to be 17,000 pesos annually. And you can break that down and pay it by quarter, or you can pay it monthly, or you could pay it for the entire year. And you have to, as long as you go to the accredited facilities for PhilHealth, you're going to get uh, discounts on all of your procedures. And there's deductibles included for each and every procedure. And in the long run, if you have a catastrophic problem, it could save you quite a bit of money to have PhilHealth. That's not the option that I've chosen to go. But it might be something that someone would think about as, far as a budget-friendly type health insurance that you could get if you're living in the Philippines on a permanent basis. 
And Phil Health is one of the options that we are considering at the moment for my wife, Jen, because for a Philippine national, the monthly premiums are between three to 600 pesos a month for the same type of coverage. And it, we, did, we don't really know what our long-term plans are yet. And we'll discuss that when I talk about my health insurance in a few minutes here. Okay. We've, I know there's going to be tons of questions about this, but please remember that I am not an expert and I might not be able to answer a lot of health insurance questions. All of the information that I am giving you today, I found online within the past three to four days, just researching and writing it down and so that I could remember it and, and share it with you guys. I'm going to put a ton of links in the description box and also in a slide at the end of the video that will show you where you can go to take a look at all of these plans that we've talked about and breaks it down where you can take your time and look at it, let it sink in and, and see what might work for your budget and for your personal needs based on your own health and lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now the, the third option that's available. Okay. So we've talked about, uh, Phil health. We've talked about major insurance companies. We've talked about using an airline for travel insurance, which I would, I would think that might be okay for the short term. If you're only here for maybe less than two years or even up to three years, you can continue that. But if you're going to be here on a long-term basis, you're probably going to want something that's a little more substantial for your insurance. That, at least that's what I would think. So, Now, the next thing that we'll talk about is the average cost of health care here in the Philippines. I know that the only time that I've used any medical facilities here is I went in for a sore throat. It's been it's a little over a year ago. It wasn't seeming to go away. I felt like I might have a strep throat. So I my doctor visit cost me $20. And then she gave me a prescription for an antibiotic, a, a 10-day course. And I got it from the pharmacy that was local there in Playardale, the barangay that we lived in. And my antibiotics cost me $18. So reasonably priced health care. Those are the only personal things that I have, have dealt with, but I do have some acquaintances that I know that have had other things that they've had to take care of here in the Philippines. Uh, one of the couples that we used to walk with us every morning, it's an elderly gentleman. He's a little bit older than me from the United States, and he had a girlfriend. She was 49 years old. She was from the Philippines, and, and she, had, she got appendicitis. And she had to be hospitalized for three days and have her appendix removed. And uh, I, re I remember because I drove him to the hospital the day that he picked his girlfriend up. And the total cost of hospital, doctor, anesthesia, the surgery, the, the entire package for him to get his girlfriend out of the hospital was 41,000 pesos. Which that's, you know, that's fairly reasonable, I would think, for an appendectomy. I, I know you're talking thousands of dollars in the USA, but here it, it cost him about $800. And the same gentleman, I, I'm sad to say, uh, he was diagnosed with lung cancer about eight months ago. Whenever we learned about it, I, I felt I was really sad for him. And he, uh, he had to go through chemotherapy and a lot of doctor visits, and he did not have health insurance. And, and I know that it put a strain on his finances, but it didn't bankrupt him. Okay, He was uh, going to chemotherapy twice a month. He was seeing the oncologist twice a month, and he was taking a ton of medication. And, and I know that his monthly medical costs... It, it, it was right in the forty to 45,000 peso range each month. He was forking out for the chemo, the drugs, et cetera, et cetera, everything that was involved. And it, just this past month, uh, it, he passed away from the cancer. It, it took his life. And he just lived right around the corner from us here. And 
we were really sad to see that, but he had made arrangements with his girlfriend to, he, to take for his final wishes and all of that. He, he didn't have himself shipped back home or anything. He had it all taken care of right here in the Philippines. And other than that, I, I don't know what other type of arrangements that he had, but that's what I know of. I'm also going to include a link below from the PhilHealth website, which gives a list of almost every conceivable medical procedure that you could have in the Philippines and what the average cost is and what PhilHealth will cover. You'd have to check with individual insurance carriers to find out you know, what type of percentages would be covered. I know that my old health insurance in the USA would cover 80% of any expensive procedure once I have met the deductible each year. Okay. So remember, there's going to be a lot of links in the description. Take your time, look at the stuff, check the cost of procedures. You know, some people choose to just have a a big major credit card that they use and keep in reserve for nothing except medical costs, or they have a large savings account and they plan on using that should they have a, should any problems arise. And I mean, th those are all feasible options, you know. It's just, it's a matter of personal preference, what your own health situation is, how do you need to take medication every day, you know, how often do you anticipate going to, to the doctor. I know for me, I just once a year, it's, it's a physical and, and that's it. And I, I've been very blessed with good health in my life. And, and I continue to be thankful to that for that. And uh, that brings us to what I do for my medical insurance. And the, trust me, I, I really lucked into this situation. It, it wasn't as though I planned it to work out this way. Back when I first started out as a teacher in Missouri, I had a good friend who gave me probably the best advice that I've ever gotten before because he had some experience in the insurance industry. And it was, he, he told me, he said, Stanley, he said, take a look at opening a health savings account. He says, it's, it's very smart venture. You're healthy. You don't have any chronic conditions. You don't take medication. He says, all you're going to do is be putting pre-tax dollars into a savings account that's going to earn interest. He said, your employer is going to make a contribution with you as well each month. And I, so I researched it, the very first job that I took there in Waynesville, Missouri. And I signed up for a health savings account. The school district matched my deposits each month. So I started making some rather large deposits, treating it kind of like a IRA account because it also it, it lowered my tax burden, but I also knew that I was building up money that I could use for health insurance. I took the high deductible plan because I, you know I, I kind of gambled on that one because until you have enough money in your health savings account to cover the high deductible, you're kind of gambling. But once you reach that threshold in your health savings account, everything else is just gravy from then on out because you have enough money in your account that you can go and, and pay for your deductible right out of your account. The account I have comes with a visa, a visa card. It's like a debit card. And as long as I use it for health related expenses, it's never taxed. That money, when it comes out of my health savings account, it's never taxed. And I, it's also usable abroad. That, that was the part that I had no idea. And I just kind of lucked into it because I had a health savings account for all 10 years that I taught in Missouri. The first, my first two employers, which was the first five years that I taught, they matched my contribution dollar for dollar. So I was putting in quite a, a large chunk into there and they were matching it for four years. And all the while, this was earning interest. And my last employer, they had a set amount that they would deposit into the account each month. It was significantly less than matching my uh, contribution. But I continued to contribute a pretty large sum each month. And 
And then the school district, they, they put in $125, $130 every month. And it just built up over 10 years. And I never had to use it for anything during that entire time. I never had any hospitalizations. I didn't have any major illnesses. I didn't have to pay for physicals and blood work because in Missouri, any school district you work in gives all the teachers a free physical and lab work at the beginning of every school year. So I just continued to, to utilize that and just let it build up. And whenever it came time for me to come to the Philippines, I knew that I was going to be covered unless it would have to be something seriously. Uh, I would have to be hospitalized for probably six months to a year before uh, I'd, I'd even be worried about my health savings account. And it also works as a backup for any other emergencies or any other things that I might need, like emergency travel which I would never use it for that because if I take a withdrawal from my health savings account, then that money is immediately taxable at like 20%. So I, I don't have any plans of doing that. And I just continue to contribute every month to that account. Now, once I retired, I cut my contribution down to the minimum amount because I already had a really large chunk in my health savings account. So now I just contribute $25 a month. It comes out of my pension. It's pre-tax, just like always. And it'll just continue to build up, and it, it's there when I need it. And, you know, I'll st I'm going to keep that going is, and continue to contribute until I hit 65 where I'll make a decision about Medicaid because at that point I have to decide whether or not I want to take Medicaid or not. And that's just something that's in the future, something to contemplate. But I'll worry about that when the time comes. But anyway, I appreciate you guys hanging out and listening to me today. And uh, if, uh, if you have any questions or comments, which I know there'll be a ton, I might not be able to answer your comments, but uh, I'll definitely do some research and, and point you in the right direction if I can. So we want to thank all of you guys so much that have subscribed to the channel. We really appreciate it. And if, if you enjoy watching these videos and haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and just keep watching, stay healthy, enjoy your life, and, and just uh, take care. We'll see you later.